in with a little hunting trip for the two of us, Eric and me. I hadn't seen Eric for several months. Not since before Karen died, in fact. When I bumped into him at the club, he suggested that we run up to his cabin in the mountains for a few days, grab a bit of fresh air and a little relaxation, see if we couldn't bag ourselves on a moose or a deer. And yet, almost at the outset, I had an uncanny feeling about that trip. <laughs> actually was the night and the setting. It was the blackest night I've ever seen. There was no moon. There was only blackness. The kind that seems to be all enveloping. As though there were nothing outside our own car but, but blackness. No road, no forest, no mountains. I'll admit I was nervous. I was boring me feet into the floorboard of the car as though somehow that would help. <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? <laughs> you, Sam. You don't look as though you're having a very good time. Well, I'm not. Frankly, shouldn't you be driving a bit slower? Why? Why, good heavens, Eric, if you make just one little slip over the wheel, we're done for, that's all. I doubt if they'd ever even find us down on these canyons. Oh, nonsense. I know every crook and turn in this road. Yeah. I don't think you're much of an outdoors man. Well, Dad. maybe not. I love this kind of company in the daytime, but I'll confess I'm not so keen on it at night. I don't like what I can't see. Funny, I'm just the opposite. There's, well, there's a challenge in the darkness that stimulates my senses. Yeah. It's exhilarating. It stirs my imagination. Well, sure, I suppose it would. But then I'm not equipped to grapple with the mysteries of the universe. Oh, Dan, you're much too modest. You always were. You've gotten out of life pretty much what you've wanted, haven't you? Well, I... Yes, I suppose so. Uh, then don't always be belittling yourself. It's an effective technique, Stan, but I'm on to you. You're as clever as the next fellow, in your own way. I sat back and tried to relax. Things weren't quite as Eric had pictured them. I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth, as they say. Eric had come up the hard way. I was average and soft. He was brilliant and hard. We'd known each other a long time, going to school together, and in love with the same girl, Karen. When I married her, he was my best man. And yet, I couldn't pretend to understand him. He was still pretty much of a stranger to me. I glanced over his way. He actually seemed to be enjoying himself. It crossed my mind that he was rather enjoying seeing me a little bit off lather, too. Well, it's not far now. Just around the next bend. Well, thank the Lord. <laughs> Suppose I'm amusing you again. <laughs> no. I was just thinking what a perfect spot this would be for a murder. A murder? Honestly, Eric, I believe that's all you think about. It is, almost. When I buy a newspaper, I read about murder the way you study the stock quotation. Murder is fascinating to me. I spend most of my time figuring out ways and means to commit murder. Oh, and now you're trying to sound like a mental case. Who knows? Perhaps I am. I have a mind. Well, here we are, old man. I've delivered you safe and sound. <laughs> All in one piece. cabin was perched high on a rocky crag jutting out from the side of the mountain, with one wall flush against a sheer drop. In front there was a steep path leading down to a lake. I could hear the lapping of the waves. Eric fixed us something to eat, then went outside. Pretty soon he came back. With an arm full of logs. His face was red and healthy. <laughs> I don't think you like my place, Dan. Huh? Oh, uh, yes, I do, honestly. I'm just tired, I guess. Oh, well, we'll turn in directly. We drive? Thanks. We will, will. I like it here. All the privacy in the world. Uh, Eric? Yes? Why do you read about murder? Why do you read about sharks and bombs? Because they interest me. It's my business. My business doesn't interest me. I read about murder because I'm interested in people. Murder is emotional, and when people are being emotional, 
to get to see more of them. Why are you so interested in people? Oh, I think I'm more curious than interested. All right, then. Why so curious? It amuses me. I find out about people. I write down what I find out. And I write my impressions of how those people will react to a series of circumstances. It's a good way to get rid of one in a business. Rather a frightening hobby. I think stamp collecting is frightening. <laughs> Uh, you're too darn clever, Eric. Why too clever? Well, I mean, you see two people. Well, what's wrong with that? Unless, of course, they have something they want to hide. Oh, I suppose it's all right. If your friends don't mind. Do you? But mine? Heaven, no. Why should I? That's right. Why should you? <laughs> well, how about hitting the hay? We have to be up early. We'll only get a few hours sleep as it is. That suits me. You sleep in my study, Stan. The bed's a bit more comfortable in there. I'll bunk here on the couch. like you thought I was going to going to strangle you. Yeah, did I? What's the matter? Have you got a guilty conscience? Yeah. Yes, I, I guess I have. What did you want, Eric? Time to get up. Oh. Already? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I've got good news, too. I just spotted a likely looking bucket right across the lake when I went down for water. Good. Well, I'll uh, get breakfast for you. As soon as you're ready. I'll be right with you. Oh, there's no rush. Take your time. Nice to have you here, old son. Well, maybe it was the way he said that as though he really meant it, but for a minute I was convinced that I'd let my imagination run away with me. Now, as for putting his hand on my throat, that was an accident. He'd been groping for my shoulder. Then the next minute I was asking myself, was it an accident, though? Suppose I had been really asleep. Suppose I hadn't grabbed his hand. I still didn't know what to think. I dressed. We sat down to breakfast. Pass me your cup, will you, Stan? I'll, I'll give you some coffee. Ah, there you are. Thanks. Sugar coming up. No, no. No sugar for me, thanks. Well, Stan, when are you going to confess? What do you mean, confess? Well, 
your line. Drank it out of you. What are you driving at? Oh, come now. You're not going to play the adolescent schoolboy with me. I swear I don't know. I'm referring to the lovely young woman you've been seen dining with and taking to the theater. Oh, you mean Marcia? Is that her name? Yes. Well, go on. Where did you meet her? How? When? Is she wealthy? Is she as beautiful as they say she is? Come on. Let's have the sordid details. Oh, uh, Eric, you're barking up the wrong tree. Am I? Oh, I... I'll admit I've taken her on occasionally, but it's nothing like that. Marsh. Do I know her? No, I don't believe you do. Isn't her last name uh, Jenkins? Yes. Oh, of course I know her. That is, I met her. But don't you remember? You you introduced me to her yourself. Oh, did I? Yes, don't you remember? I ran into you at Silver's. You were buying perfume, and she was helping you select it. For Karen. Remember? Oh, oh, yes. Now that you recall More it, More coffee? I... Uh, yeah. No sugar. When we got to the lake, we bailed out the boat, loaded it, and pushed out into, into the fog. It was still half light when we reached the other side, so we sat in the boat, lighted cigarettes, waited for the sun to come up. We'd been sitting there just smoking and not saying anything when... He suddenly turned to me and said, You say that she's been ill. Uh, oh, Karen. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, she's been ill for some time, Eric. So she killed herself. Yeah. There was an inquest, of course. Well, yes, of course. Why do you ask? Look at the sun. Did you ever see such colors? Four ways to commit murder. I'd almost forgotten about Eric's hands on my throat. Now the incident jumped vividly back to my mind. Because now I knew that Eric had a reason. He looked away after he'd asked me about the inquest. He didn't answer me when I asked him why he wanted to know. Somewhere in some strange dark corner of his mind, he was still obsessed by love for Karen, even though she was dead and gone. He thought that she'd still be alive and happy if she hadn't married me. My legs were weak when he motioned me out of the boat. I hear blues somewhere near us. We stopped. Did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. Moving west. Yeah. Stan, you work west. Just about a half a mile or so ahead of us, you'll come to a clearing. We get to a stand there. Right. I'll strike north and west and then work toward the clearing. Good hunting. So what to expect? I felt somewhat relieved, at least. I'd be ready for him. Nothing happened until I nearly reached the clearing. Then I got the feeling that someone was walking with me, timing his steps with mine. I stopped. Listen. I don't know how long I stood there. My rifle gripped in my hands. But suddenly, instinctively, I whirled around. A shot whistled over my head. And then I saw a buck running across the clearing. He shot at me and missed. Well, two can play at that game, I thought. The next shot would be mine, and I wouldn't miss. I dropped to my knees, watching the brush form. And then all of a sudden, I, I saw him running toward me, right out in the open. I started to raise my rifle, but I couldn't. I couldn't kill a man that way in cold blood. Dan, Dan old son, did I hit you? Well, confound you. Now, hold on a minute, old son. Let's not lose our heads. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, of course, but I had no idea. You were to take Dan in the clearing, so I naturally assumed that you were there. I don't know what I can say. I... Well, it... maybe it was my fault. I... I don't know. Anyway, let's forget it. But I, 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 I said let's skip it. I stuck close to Eric after that. I gave no more opportunity for a shooting accident. It was just when we headed back toward the cabin. We didn't get out, but not that I cared. And I'm sure Eric didn't. He was at a different game. Then I saw a boat on the beach. By drowning. Here we were alone. I couldn't refuse to get in the boat with him. There was no other way of getting back to the cabin. I could feel the perspiration trickling down my ribs. I stumbled in the underbrush. Easy now, easy. <laughs> it's too bad we didn't bag that fellow. For what? That buck. Better luck tomorrow, maybe. Yeah. Better luck tomorrow. You seem preoccupied, Sam. Do I? Yeah. 
I have the ghastly feeling that I'm failing you as a host. I don't think you're having a very good time. I... I think this is a marvelous country, Eric. Well, you've exercised phenomenal restraint, old son. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, about expressing your admiration for it. I'd never have suspected that you liked it so much. That remark called for some sort of an answer, but I wasn't equal to it. Fortunately, I was spared the necessity. We reached the lake in the boat then. We tossed our guns into it. Eric started to push out from shore. Now, easy does it. Hang on to the oars, will you, while I climb in? <laughs> All set? All set. Splendid. Here, now, you better let me row. I know this lake. There's some treacherous spots in it. What do you mean? There's some pretty nasty boulders sticking up. Some of them aren't so easy to spot. Come too close to the surface for comfort. I see. If we were to hit one of them, we'd turn over in a hurry. You don't swim, do you, Stan? You know darn well I don't. That's a shame. It's a mistake not to learn to swim. Don't you think? What happened after that was a nightmare. He rode, and I sat there paralyzed. I couldn't move. I couldn't think. I knew I should do something, but what? I stared at the water till I was blind, looking for rocks. Derek's place was a blur, and he just smiled and rode and rode and talked. And his voice sounded hollow and unreal. You're shaking, Stan. Something wrong? This lake's plenty deep. Lots of fish in it, too. Uh, maybe we can do a little fish. He stopped suddenly. He'd seen something in the water. He turned around, pulled hard on the oars. We'd reached the spot. He knew it. And then... Don't do it! Four ways to commit murder. You read it, of course. 
Well, yes, I, I beg to tell you, Cap. This is I intended you to. Were you frightened all day today? I don't understand. You didn't know, did you, that I came to your engagement party to ask Karen to be my wife? I wasn't aware that you were throwing a party or that she had accepted. Good Lord. Perhaps you don't remember what I told you that night. You thought I was joking, but I meant every word I said. That I'd make you pay if you failed, Karen. You made her unhappy. Then all these years, you... Then you did bring me up here to murder you? You're so right, Sam. But you pulled me out of the lake. You saved my life. You are a dull-witted clown, aren't you, Stan? Don't you know me better than that? Did you think I'd kill you in, in the manner of a homicidal moron? <laughs> no, Stan. But you did take a shot. Oh, yes. That was the second way. The first way was by waking you by the throat this morning. The boat tipping over was the third way. And now I suppose we've reached the fourth way. Your brilliance positively staggered me. You can't get away with it, Eric. Oh, yes, I can. I can. You see how intently I'm watching you. I'm waiting to see you fall. You're going to die, Stan. Just as Karen died. What do you mean? In the coffee stand. That's right. Your coffee's poisoned. Yes, she poisoned her coffee. Only yours is a slow poison. <laughs> Poetic just, don't you think? You poisoned my coffee? Yes, I, I wore down your guard. I landed so that by now you would trust me, would have faith in me. <laughs> You poisoned my coffee. <laughs> what if you... What if... <laughs> I, I didn't drink my coffee, Eric. I changed cups with you. There was sugar in my cup, Eric. <laughs> I don't drink sugar in my coffee, Eric. So I changed cups with you. I didn't mean to do it, Eric. <laughs> But I don't like sugar in my coffee. So you see, I didn't kill Eric, really. He killed himself accidentally. But I wish he had killed me. He had good reason to. Because somehow he knew about Karen... About how I killed Karen by putting poison in her coffee that morning. And I watched her die the same way that I watched Eric die. I'm tired now. I don't want to talk anymore. You do whatever you want with me. <laughs> <laughs>